Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Let's Play EcoQuest. So, last we left off, we entered this cave, but we couldn't go any further because we didn't have a light. Because I forgot that we needed a light. But if you remember, from two episodes back, we did see a flashlight fish. So let's go see if we can go collect that guy. We couldn't earlier because our jar had a lid on it that we couldn't get off because we're 12 or something. So with the help of an octopus, we did get the lid off of that jar. So now we should be able to get the flashlight fish into the jar. And then we'll have a light source. I am still drinking my um, white Russian. music in this game is downright creepy. Alright, so let's see if we can get this flashlight fish now. Adam senses some movement inside the ear. The flashlight fish darts into the jar and settles in the bottom. Wow, look at that! Glowing light, just like the oracle said! Adam carefully places the glowing jar in his backpack. Excellent, so now we have a glowing light. The jar glows with the flashlight fish's light. So let's go all the way back to the cave. Seems like the anemone's calmed down. He's no longer heaving with pain or discomfort or whatever. I've never seen an enemy that big. Do they get that big? I don't know. Hi, Mr. Octopus. Or Mrs. Octopus. Okay, here we go. So, Adam, I can't see where I'm going. Let's get out of here before we get hurt. Let's use our flashlight fish instead. Adam holds out the glowing jar. The, fr the flashlight fish senses the friendly dark of the cave. Gathering courage, it swims out of the jar and settles down between two rocks. What a relief! Now I can see where I'm going! Adam puts the empty jar into his recycling bag. Okay, what is all this stuff? The dead sea fan looks like a ghostly spider web. Sea fan, huh? Flashlight fish's steady glow reveals an opening clogged with brownish rocks. It almost looks like a wall of stones. From the prophecy! A wall of stones, huh? Are the ones that go down stalagmites or the stalactite sites? I can't even ever remember. There's a trick to remembering that. I can't think of it though. The stalagmites go up, the stalactites hang down. If you don't know that, you've never played Space Quest. <laughs> we'll play Space Quest someday. A slightly less uh, friendly game. Okay. So let's take a look at this wall. I already looked at it. Right, let's try and tear it down. Adam reaches up and pulls on one of the brownish rocks. It falls easily into the floor of the cave. A strange green light seeps through the small hole. Keep going. Another rock pulls out easily. It must not have been there for very long. You mean like someone put these here?
pretty bright in here now. Hey, these are coming out, no problemo. Yeah, it feels more to me like somebody put these here. The greenish substance leaks through the opening. Just beyond Adam sees large shapes. However, it's not clear what they are yet. This is pretty ominous. The greenish color of the water intensifies as the rocks come out. This music is so creepy. I get scared easily. <laughs> Which is why I like never really played a Space Quest game. Well, that's not true. Well, it's kind of true. I watched my brothers play Space Quest. I think something's happening to my to the water, Adam. I'm getting dizzy. My sonar feels a little off or something. Should I stop? No, we've got to find out what's on the other side. still isn't big enough to swim through. Okay. The light strikes something hidden behind the rocks. Oh. What is it? A metal box has been concealed in the pile of rocks. Bummer, it's locked. Well, can I get it? Okay. We have a key. A skeleton key. The key turns halfway in the lock and then stops. It seems that salt water has rusted the mechanism. Rusty, eh? Well. Do we have something to solve that? Can we. The lock needs easing. That will help. Oh, we have something to ease it with. We have an oily rag. Adam eases the lock with an oily rag. Now let's try the key. The key turns smoothly in the oiled lock. The box pops open to reveal a suit of protective clothing. Ah, oops. Sorry, I missed that. I've seen clothes like this. They protect your skin from chemicals. Armor for a modern knight. Do you suppose this is it? I think so. Adam feels immediate relief. Whatever was in the water was making it really hard to think. Adam, I can't go any farther. Whatever is in the water is really affecting me. I'll wait right here as long as I can t as long as I can take it. Adam singles signals okay to Delphinius. I guess it came with a helmet too. A group of metal drums lie rusting in the hidden spot. A familiar greenish glow seeps from the rusting patches in the metal. Now Adam realizes what the oracle meant by poison of the deep. The deadly poison which lurks in the drums has been slowly released into the water, bringing disaster to the reef. The softened white outlines of fronds can still be seen. A foul, slimy growth hangs in loops from the ceilings above. The skeletons of unfortunate creatures who have wandered here cover the floor of the cave. Yeah, this looks terrible. Barrels are rusting and would be unsafe to touch them. Well, this is exactly what we've been talking about. Let's let's get rid of it. If we signal people above, then we can get some professionals to come take the stuff away. I think. Yeah? Yeah. Adam turns on the transmitter and attaches his improvised, improvised satellite buoy to the barrel. The float rises towards the surface. The transmitter is emitting a constant, powerful signal. And hey. Okay. 
Adam watches from a distance as the divers carefully collect the drums. Grimly, they bear them to the surface and stow them on the boat for safe disposal on land. Adam gives the metal box and suit as evidence of illegal dumping. He returns to the reef to find Delphinius and continue the search for Cetus. And it's all cleared away. Adam, you did it! The poison is gone! The first part of the prophecy is fulfilled! They've taken it away, that's true, but I'm afraid it'll be a long time before anything can survive here. We also have to worry about catching the people who did this. It looks to me like they've been using this spot for a while. But that's something I'll have to leave up to my dad. And we still haven't found Cetus. Yeah, but you're a hero, Adam. You're a hero. The contaminated fish and plants have been removed. The ocean bottom looks clean and barren, but for a few skeletons from the hapless fish who once swam here. Well, let's continue on, shall we? Gosh. This looks ominous also. Far in the distance is a cave mouth. It looks like a gaping wound. Hmm. And this. The harpoon gun is a reminder of the dreadful practice of whale hunting. This one has been triggered. Whale hunting, eh? The cable from the harpoon is still attached to the gun. Is that so? There's nothing Adam can do with the ship's cabin. cable's really wedged in there. Can we get in through here and maybe... There's nothing Adam can do with the ship's cabin. Oh, okay. Well, let's try using the, um, trident like we did before. Adam, I don't like the looks of it here. I'm guessing that's still Phineas. Oh man, the music changed. <laughs> it's starting to get creepy. Uh... Why are you going all the way over there? What's the matter with you? The prophecy has been right so far. Why aren't there people talking? Oh my god. I know, but I feel sort of funny, like something's watching us. Don't be such a baby. Wow, take a look at that cave and the ship. It's still a whaling... I think it's a whaling vessel. Recent, too. Huh. Adam? What is it? Behind you! Ah. Flesh eater, run! Oh god. Oh, that thing swims quickly. Adam and Delphinius flee in terror from a huge flesh-eating monster. Run! I can't control anything. I just have to read. It's just like a cutscene. With a feeling of utter helplessness, Adam prepares to feel the sharp bite of Flesh Eater's jaws. The monster is so close that the hit that his hot weight ruffles the back of Autumn's neck. Adam's neck. <laughs> Autumn. Oh jeez. Ah! In their panicked terror of, of the danger behind them, Adam and Delphinius fail to notice the danger in front of them. They both plow headfirst into the drift net. The nylon mesh wraps its arms around them. The two are trapped. Delphinius, we're trapped! Adam, you've got to save yourself! I'll never get out of this thing, but you still have a chance. I won't leave you, Del. So what? We both end up as manta food? Do it, Adam! Save yourself! Adam waits for the manta to finish them off, two helpless victims trapped in the net. To his surprise, Flesh Eater only circles them. Uh, so he knows. Can I do anything? Okay, I can do something. Let's cut ourselves out. Adam maneuvers the sharp shell around and begins to rub it against the nylon net. The shell saws through the nylon, loosening the net's grasp on him. He's free. Get Del, Del free. You did it, Adam! Now get out of here, fast! Are you crazy? What kind of friend do you think I am? Adam turns back frantically to cut loose his friend. 
Jeez, the thing's huge. But before he can free Delphinius, Flesh Eater swoops in, in enraged to see one of his victims escape. He's determined not to lose the other. He seizes the net with poor Delphinius still in it. And knocks Adam aside with one flick of his huge wing. Adam, find Cetus! Only he can save me now! back to his cave. Adam finds himself suddenly alone. The drift net with his precious cargo and the monster are gone. What on earth, Adam thinks, can he do now? And will he ever see Delphinius again? Of course you will, it's a Sierra game! Actually, I guess that doesn't really mean much. <laughs> Lots of people die in, in uh, Sierra games, but... We still have a chance to save him. So, we'll have to go back to the whaling ship, because, I mean... According to the Oracle's prophecies that she gave us while we were solving the riddles, Cetus was attacked by a whaling ship, so it must be connected to him somehow. If we can follow the wire, maybe we can uh, find Cetus. So anyway, we will do that in the next video.